Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract. In the last tutorial, we took a look at a motion controller and to control a car, and we made the car hit a wall. And we thought, hey, we should do a tutorial on hit tests. So let's do that. We'll go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And if we go under examples here, we can go under collections, go to the Zim bits right here. Zim bits are 24, no, 64, 64 Zim bits, and we can see little pictures of them here if we hit the picture thing. And we're looking for one that sort of looks like, oh yeah, that's it right there. So this is the hit test um, Zim bits, and there's a car that just hit that triangle. Oh, those two cars hit each other. And then I can pick up this little guy and make him go for a ride by hitting the registration point of that car. Oh, nice, huh? Let's see, so that's that one. And what other ones do we have? I think there was one, oh yeah, called Hit Test Itself. So this was earlier on in Zim 1, I think we introduced these hit tests. At the time there were five of them, now there's something like nine. So we're picking up the circle and this is gonna to check to see, we're given the very default one is the shape of something hitting a point or is a point hitting the shape. The shape shape has colors. So this outside thing here is not part of the shape and it could be a weird looking shape too right now, the shape's a circle. So it could be a, um, uh, a PNG for instance, it has background transparent, that's not called part of the shape. Only the stuff with pixels is a shape. So you can sort of check, hey, is the color underneath the um, this point, is it a color or is it clear? If it's clear, it's not hitting. If it's a color, it's hitting. So that's what CreateJS gave us is that one basic hit test, hit test point. So here's that in, <clears throat> in action here. We're checking to see if it's hitting the center point of the stage. Pop, and there it says it's hitting. So that's great. Here are two circles to see if the circles are hitting. So that's another type, are two circles hitting. And in the beginning, we used to have this thing called hit test circle, we still do, but that's is any shape hitting points around a circle. Because remember, we got any shape, but we can't check is any shape hitting any shape. All right, that's too processor intensive. So what we do is we say, are the points around a circle, we, we put a number of points around the circle, one here, one here, one at the 45 degrees, and one in the center, are any of those points hitting this other shape? So that's called hit test circle. Then we realized, well, if we're hitting two circles, if we're wanting to test two circles, we could use an equation. And equation-based hit tests are faster. So we now have hit test circles, are two circles hitting as an equation. Truthfully, I can't remember if this is even using hit test circles because we introduced that later. And this is a remake of that earlier code and we're at 36% the size of our original code. So we're actually improving Zim as we go in time as well. <laughs> so here's another type of hit test. Is, is the shape of this circle hitting the registration point of that box? Registration point is this round thing and we go like this and boop, there it says it's hitting the registration. And this one I think is, are the bounds hitting? And yeah, that, so those were different types of hit tests. But let's go into Adobe Animate and explore these, shall we? Woohoo! So we'll reduce this down. Ah, here's our last one. What did this look like again? We had a car, I think we were using the key, and there's the hit test on, on that. We just used a hit test bounds, which is good because both those shapes are rectangular. All right, so let's close that then. Bop, and we'll start up a new one here. Very high. And we could, at this point, we'll want to import Zim. So under HTML, we can import the Zim shim. <laughs> but we also have some things we want to do here. So in the very first tutorial, we created a profile and now we're going to import that profile but basically all we're doing is checking these three boxes and under HTML import the Zim shim and that's that's basically what we did and we hit OK all right and let's bring up a code panel well uh, we'll also save this I'm thinking of it file save as and we'll call it not this one but Close, 26, not the motion controller, but rather hit tests. Hit tests. <clears throat> okay, 
and F9. This is Zim 20. Ooh. 26, is that what we said? Hit tests. So we'll make a couple of objects that we can hit. Const uh, circle is equal to a new circle, radius of 100, and we'll make it purple. And we'll dot center that on the stage. And we'll make a const rect, and we'll make it a new rectangle. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so because we didn't type the whole word rectangle, we get rectangle there, but circle dropped to lowercase. I forgot to check that. So um, new rectangle, 200 comma 200, and how about mm, green? And we will dot pose this without the square bracket, going square bracket. Uh, we'll pose it at 100 comma 100 from the left and from the bottom. Okay, let's push these down a bit so we can see what we're doing. We'll also drag it, dot drag. And same with this one as well, dot drag. And let's have a look. So now we've got a rectangle that's green and a circle that is purple. And right now they all, oh, they love one another without hitting. <laughs> Uh, yes, aren't they a nice couple? Oh, huggity, huggity, huggity. So now we're going to do some hit tests. Have you been hitting? <laughs> maybe we shouldn't call it a hit test. Maybe we should call it a, a touch test. Are you, uh, oh, uh, maybe not. What is this world coming to? <laughs> anyway, um, hitting, touching, whatever. So uh, to do a hit test, we can't just say if circle.hit test bounds, this might not be the right one, but uh, we'll, we'll do this one first, rect, then do something, uh, rect dot remove from, for instance. You see why? This is what we, we kind of want to do. This is like, oh, if there are circles hitting the bounds of the rectangle, remove the rectangle. And we try it, and it's just kind of like, um, nah, it doesn't seem to be working. That's because that hit test happened right here, right at the very beginning. And if we take a look at what's happening at the beginning, they're not hitting. <laughs> so it's almost never do we want to just do the hit test right away. We want to put the hit test in something. So one thing, uh, we don't really need to check all the time. That would be a waste of processing. Uh, we won't notice that waste of processing, uh, but the environmentalist might get you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But anyway, um, maybe instead we would want to do something like this. We would use an event circle dot on uh, press move. So that's the event when we're pressing down and moving at the same time. Comma, uh, we would call some, we could call an arrow function here, but we might want to put this event on both of the circle and the rectangle. So perhaps we'll go check hitting. Or check hit or something like that. Hit. Okay, check hitting. And we would do the same thing for the rectangle. And then we would have our function check hitting here. And inside here, that's where we want to do uh, whatever we're going to do. Okay, which this would work. If the circle hits the bounds of the rectangle, remove the rectangle. Why don't we, instead of removing the rectangle though, why don't we say rect.alpa, or alf, alp? Where are these square brackets coming from? I must, my keyboard must be shifted over a little bit. Rect.alp.5. So we'll just reduce the alpha by 0.5. That way we can still see it. And maybe well, we could do that to both of them, shall we? Circle.alp.5. The stage.update, we might need a stage.update, but probably the dragging of it. Remember the dragging, as soon as we're dragging something, it gets added to the ticker, which does that one stage.update. So it'll probably be okay. But um, maybe just in case we can put in a stage.update here because we're making a change. But I think the drag would have taken care of that. Okay, we go control enter. And now let's have a look. 
Oh, not working. So F12 to see if we've got a boo-boo. We do. Circle is not defined. Did you see that? And you go, oh, wait, 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 wait. Where did we put circle without a C? C-I-R-C. -C. So is a circle hit test bounds the rect? Okay, let's have a look now. What suspense that was. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, there we go. Okay. So... However, it might not be totally the best, because watch what happens. This is checking the bounds. The bounds are rectangles around the shapes. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not even hitting, and yet it looks like they're hitting. But we can check that out by going into the circle and going dot outline. So outline is the way we, as we're coding, can sort of get uh, an outline to find out what's happening here. There's the registration point. There's zero, zero inside. Here are the bounds. So watch. Not hitting but boop hitting. So those are the bounds that are hitting, which means it's probably not the best type of hit test if we've got a circle. All right, well, I know it's not the best type of hit test if we've got a circle. What would be better is, is the circle hit test circle rect like this. So this is, is the circle and we've got circle rect, so our, a circle hitting a rectangle. That's basically what we're saying here. And we put the circle next to the circle side, and we put the rect next to the rect side. And then we get this. Yes, good, good. Nice, huh? So that's a perfect hit test. Super, because it uses equations. So it's, that means it's very fast. So in other words, if you've got a circular object and you've got a rectangular object, doesn't have to be a square, a rectangular object, then you can um, use hit test circle rect. Uh, there is also hit test circle like that. And so then you would switch this. It would be the rect or whatever shape would be here, the rect. And then whatever circular shape would be here, uh, circle. So is this, is this weird looking shape, although it's a rectangle, but it could be any shape, is it hitting a circle? And how it does that, if we go control enter, is what it does is it takes points around the circle, one here, one at the top, one in between. One here in between, one here, one here, one here, and one in the middle. And it sees if any of those points are hitting this weird looking shape. So this could be any shape, a bitmap with background transparent, it would only check for the shape. So that works like that. It would work if, um, it would work if we hit it on the side. It would work if we hit right here. Should we try? That works because that's where a point is. But if we go in between this point and this point, it won't work. See that? So what we're doing is we're checking the points around the circle. Remember, this could be any squiggly shape and we don't have, is this squiggly shape hitting another squiggly shape? So anyway, watch this. As we come in closer, bing, there it hit one of these two. I know, probably that one. Okay, and you can increase the number of circles around here uh, in the hit test call. So you can do that. And it works the other way around too. There can be a hit test rect. And then what it's doing is it's checking to see if this weird shape of a circle is hitting any points around a rectangle. And then it's one point, one point, one point in the middle, one point in the very middle of everything. Okay, or one point in the middle of all the edges. Uh, but like I said, you can increase the number of points on an edge at that point. You can have one here, 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 and then it's a tighter one. But the the rule of thumb generally is if you've got, say, if you had something really small, the problem is the thing that's small could fit through there. So basically, you put the points around the small thing, and you make the big thing actually be the whole shape that it's checking against, and that way it can't slip through. All right. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, some some info. One thing about hitting. So the best one is hit test circle rect for for this specific one, and at which point this becomes the rect and this becomes the circle. One thing about hitting is it constantly will be hitting. Uh, oh, only when we're moving. I don't know. If, well, okay. Let me just show you this. So if we set the alpha to 0.5, that's one thing. But what if we said dot alpha, 
uh, minus equals 0 0.01. Minus equals 0 0.01. Okay, so what this is doing is it's saying if we're hitting, reduce it by a certain amount. And we'll do the same thing with the rectangle. Okay, can you imagine that? So now watch what happens. As we go in and hit, it starts fading out. Cool, huh? It's almost like health. Oh, and you take it away, you've still got some health. But bring it back and you don't. Problem is, is look at that. Wait a minute, I am hitting. Why isn't the health going down? So the answer is because I'm not moving. So it's only when I move that the health goes down and that's because we put it on a press move. So let's do the check hitting in a ticker. Down below, we will say ticker dot add this error. Oh, well, we could put the name of the function here, hitting ticker dot add check hit. All right. Okay. And we won't bother checking only when we press move. <clears throat> so now it's going to be checking all the time if it's hitting. And we go control enter. Just get rid of some of these. Okay, you ready? It's not hitting, not hitting. Oh, well, there it is hitting. And if I stay there, it's gone. So now it's checking all the time and it's gone. But one thing, so it's cool, right? <clears throat> That's probably what we want in that case if that was health. But one thing is, imagine if we played a sound when it's hitting. We'd be in trouble because the sound would go, uh, dong, 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 you know, like it would just play thousands of times over top of one another. There's actually a limit, I think, of a hundred times. And there's ways that we can set when we set to play the sound or create the sound. We can say, don't interrupt. Um, as in, if it's playing, you have to wait until it finishes playing before we play it again. There's other ones that say uh, replay it so it won't play on top of one. It won't multiply play, but it will keep on starting again. And there's other ones saying um, uh, a limit of how many to play. So there's all sorts of settings there, thanks to CreateJS. And we've made that even easier with how we uh, address bringing in audio. So anyway, um, that's cool. But there are tricks to to hitting. And why don't we show you those. They're all in the Zim tips, so it can show you tips. But before you do that, let, or before we do that, let's just talk about a few other types of hit tests. Uh, I guess we've seen the basics. There's hit test point as well, so you can do a hit test point, hit test reg. Um, but if you're going to hit a grid of things, then the best type of hit test is hit test grid because that's a calculation. So instead of checking each of the shapes inside or even calculating each of the things inside, but instead of doing each one inside, what a hit test grid does, well, let me show you a grid and that way we can visualize it as I talk about it. So going back to the Zim examples, if we go up to the bits, I think we had an example in there. Uh, let's turn on the pictures. It wasn't those dots. There it is right there. Ooh, so this is being done by a hit test grid, which is a lot faster than checking each individual one. So you see the performance of that is quite good. My mouse is true. Um, so rather than checking each one, what we do is we say, oh, we've got this grid, it's this big. It has this many columns, this many rows, and this much spacing. And then we just ask, where is the location of the mouse in that? It's an equation-based thing, it's very fast. Okay, this over here is a, not a grid, it's called a pad. So we're showing a tile and a pad. So this is a tile with hit test grid, and you can go in and check out the code for that. Another place that we did something similar anyway is in the intro right here. So there's a tile down there. We didn't use the hit test grid here, but if we pick that up, uh, we're removing those objects, or we might be removing them or something like that. Oh, there's a trick with removing and looping through containers. So imagine uh, when, when you have a container like this filled with objects, you can use a hit test grid on it and that might work. But if you're going to remove the objects inside here, 
then, and you're doing a hit test on each one, uh, basically what happens is to, or to do a hit test on each one inside, you have to loop through the container and check each one. So if you have uh, 20 asteroids and you've got a ship, you've got to loop through um, each, you've got to loop through the asteroids container and check each asteroid to see if it's hitting the ship. If the ship were shooting lasers, one laser, two laser, three laser, you'd have to loop through each laser and inside that loop, loop through each asteroid to see if that particular laser hit any of the particular asteroids. That's how it's done. And then you remove the asteroid, you remove the laser. All right, so that's looping and Zim makes uh, looping pretty easily or pretty easy. Let's look at this, control U. Sorry, we won't have color syntax, but uh, going down here, make a tile at the bottom right. All right, so here is we have some random colors. We're making a new tile. We've seen this in a in a tutorial before. We're tiling a rectangle with those random colors. That's the Zim V values, eight by four with five by five spacing. So we're centering that on part four. Then we have an eraser that's a rectangle. We're dragging the eraser. Here's the eraser press move. So we're checking to see if we're hitting uh, right here. Here's the hit. But look at what we're doing. Pixels dot loop. So we loop through the pixels each time we get a pixel. And, and it says here, for better performance on large tiles, use the hit test grid, but we're not in this case. So we're looping through the pixels. And then if the eraser is hitting the bounds of the pixel, pixels are square, the eraser is square, that's an obvious one. So we don't have hit test square or hit test rex plural, we just use the hit test bounds because the bounds are rectangles around the objects. Okay, so if the eraser is hitting, then we're just dropping the alpha. So pixel, set the alpha to zero, and then animate after two seconds. So we're waiting two seconds. Bring the alpha property back to one in a time of 0.5 seconds. Isn't Zim beautiful? Like, I mean, just, just like reading, it's just like reading, basically. And then we're updating the stage. So what we're seeing here is as we hit, we then wait two seconds and then we bring those back. We animate them back in and that's what's uh, doing that. However, if we remove them, anytime you remove an object from a container, did we remove them? No, we just put their alpha to zero. But if we remove them, then all of a sudden the container has a different number of children in it and it will mess up the checking. So anytime you remove, you got to loop backwards. That's another one of these tips. Okay, so we'll go through the tips again, and you'll see that. Uh, sorry if this is a long one for you. <laughs> you're managing to survive. There's a lot of different types of hit tests, and it is quite important, so you're welcome to go get a cookie or something like that. Uh, let's go back to Zim's. All right, I'll just do it uh, here, and I was looking for another example. Uh, this one happened in Zim 10. So in Zim 10, we introduced hit test path right here. And what we do is this can be any path. As you can see, I can uh, move it. So this is a blob and we can make blobs take any shape or it could be a squiggle path. And then what we do is we put points around the squiggle or the blob like that. And we test to see if any of these points are hitting the circle as it comes nearby there. Isn't that cool? So uh, that's, that's called hit test path. And now can you imagine how your track of, of your car might work? And you can say how many of these they're, they're going to be. Uh, as you can see, if we get bigger like this, then the, the space between them gets bigger. So we might need uh, more of these points around the path. So if this were a track, let's make a track out of it. <clears throat> Here we go. Well, you can imagine that. Huh? We're, we're starting to make a track. Boom, 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 boom. We need another one here. What I'm doing is, is clicking through these different types of points. Right now, this one's called uh, straight. So it allows these to move independently, but it's always on a straight line. If I double click, this is called free. Now they can move independently, but not in a straight line. Double click again, it becomes none. Double click again, and it becomes mirror. Double click, and we're back to straight. Double click, 
and I, I was just wanting this one with a point of none. So actually these are kind of annoying. They're not really the one I want because I was trying to make them even. But anyway, there's my path. Yay, it's a path. So we could put the car on there and as the car drives, if it hits any of those dots, we can take away some points. But we can't easily stop it from driving off the path. For that, you may want physics. You may want to put physics bounds, although curve physics bounds aren't the easiest thing either. Um, so anyway, there you go. <laughs> Uh, that might be a way that you could do a hit test with a car on here, take away points and make them drive back on. You can try and redirect them or take away the motion controller until they're pointing the right way. And we have some examples of mazes that do that type of thing. Well, let me show you, I suppose. Um, so here's Zim and under examples, uh, we're looking for a maze, control F, maze. So there's a couple mazes. Where to find it? That's an isometric maze where it's already got a board and we're moving along the board, so that wasn't it. Here's the hand-drawn maze, and that's super. I think the other maze was in bits, though, if I recall, actually. Just have a look. Do you see anything that looks like a maze in here? So a lot of people ask how to make mazes, and that would be similar to keeping a car on a track. So have a look. Oh, yeah, here. So um, this is done. This is a maze done with hit tests, although it looks like it's having a problem at the moment. Crap. What happened to it? F12. Lib is not defined. So uh, we used a library to pull up that maze and we might must not have updated it into the right file at the moment or something like that. So, well, we'll have to look at that later then. Um, but here's the maze with the hand-drawn maze. So that other one done with hit test, we'll fix that up right after. You're welcome to go take a look at it. Basically, as you hit a wall, it sort of stops you from moving in that direction. And then you have to kind of move in a different direction. And so you can see how we could stay on a maze. My apologies for having that broken at the moment. We just updated all these to Zim version Zim01 and something must have happened. So here's the hand-drawn maze right here. And it's, it's using physics. So there we go. Uh, this thing is following the mouse right now, but that's because forces, physics forces are pushing it that way. And as we go, oh, I just saw it go through a wall. It shouldn't have done that. Um, but as it hits edges, it's hitting a bunch of little circles that are put in there. And we can like speed up or slow down depending on how accurate we want that stuff to be. I have yet to see it go through a wall and that's kind of funny. Of course it would do it right, right here in our live example. But you see that that's working fairly well. Okay, um, so that's a maze using physics and that would be kind of easier, wouldn't it, to, to keep it on the track? Or, well, you don't know, but it, it, we, we think it's easier. And the neat thing about this is this is a picture that is just brought in. It could be any picture. You could let the user upload a picture of their maze and uh, work on it in, in the same way. Fantastic, huh? So that's quite marvelous. Do people like this? Let's see. 121 loves. Not bad. Okay, so people do like it. Um, all right, so that's a little bit more about the hit tests uh, that was using physics. The other, the other example that we that broke was uh, using just normal hit tests. We talked about hit test paths, which is relatively new. That's new in Zim 10. And then we had all of our basic hit tests that we went through. So that's a, a good look at hit tests. Oh, right. We were supposed to look at some of the pitfalls, though. So let's go to the Zim site. And down in the gold bars are tips. Now, we're not letting you off that or that easily. <laughs> okay, so there's tips right here. And hit test is right here, hit test. So here are some tips of hit test that we can kind of review as we go along as well. First of all, um, we almost never put the hit test right in the beginning. So it might go in a ticker. We might do it on a press move event or on a press up event. If you're throwing something in the garbage, did we hit the garbage? So you could do the hit test there. And if it's not in the right place, you might animate it back to where it started from. So we have snapping examples inside of those Zim bits. Look up snapping and you can see how to do that. So there's an example of the third one. Uh, here's a warning. Ball.hit test wrecked 
can. If the ball is smaller, it might fit in the bounds of the can. So in general rule is you want to put, um, you want to check the points of the smaller object against the shape of the bigger object so it doesn't slip through. Then we have lots of different types of hit test. Hit test rect, hit test circle, hit test rect circle. What? No, that's hit test circle rect. I think we got an error there. Got to go um, fix that. Uh, hit test bounds, hit test circles, plural. So that's if two circles are hitting. If you want two rectangles, that's hit test bounds right there. Hit test grid for a grid. Remember we mentioned that. Here's a hit test path. We do have videos on those as well, and obviously docs on all these things. Sometimes your hit tests hit too many times, so here's how you can deal with that. If uh, your ball is hitting a rect, if you don't want it, say you want to keep score, how many of these did you get? You don't want it, if you leave it there, you could keep on hitting it and get lots of scores. Or it might be playing sounds way too many times. So just remove one of the objects and then they won't be hitting anymore. So that's one way to do it. Just remove the object. Quite often that, that's all you need to do. Um, if you're in a ticker and you're checking and you're not removing, uh, what you can do is remove the ticker as well. So here is a ticker where we've added our check function. Note that we assign the ticker to a variable right here. And then when we want to remove the ticker, we say ticker.remove that reference variable. Okay, and that will remove this function from the ticker. And then it will only play once. Yay! But it won't, that ticker won't keep on checking. Uh, anyway, down here on a stage mouse move, say you're moving, you're making something follow here, the ball is going to follow the position of the cursor. We're not using a motion controller in this case, but we're just doing it manually. That's how you would do that. And if the ball is hitting the rectangle, then you can turn off the mouse move event. So uh, right here, we've stored the mouse move event in a variable. You see how we've got stage mouse move and we assign that to a variable, mouse move event. Inside here, we say stage.off. So rather than stage.on, stage.off, and we put the event name. That removes the event. Yay! So that'd be like removing a ticker, but here we're removing the event. You can also do it manually yourself with a check variable. So uh, we're not hitting, so we're saying hit check is false. If we're not hitting and the ball is hitting, then do the sound, yay. But look what we do, we set the hit check to true. So the next time the press move is, is calling constantly as we move, the next time we'll be hitting and therefore this won't be true and it won't even go in here, only check once basically. The advantage of that is we can hit for a while and then say put a ticker in, or not a ticker, a timeout inside of here. A timeout one second. Um, set, and in that timeout function, we can put the hit check back to false. And so what that would allow you to do is hit, uh, but while we're hitting, it won't keep on, you know, saying hitting, hitting, hitting until one second later, if, it, if it's one second later, it will hit again. So that would allow you to check to see if you're hitting, remove some points, move away from it, and then check to see if you're hitting again without removing all of the all of the checks. Just put a timer on it. So that's what we're saying there. So it just sort of depends on what you're needing to do. If you've got multiple objects, you need to loop through those multiple objects. So this is that example of looping through circles and checking on some things. Okay, so that's that example. And if you're removing, then loop backwards. So here is looping through the circles. If we're removing the circle, then we want to make sure that we loop backwards. This true means backwards. We knew that we know that you have to loop backwards when removing things. Very common. And so we put a parameter right in the loop saying, hey, this loops forward through those. This true means loop backwards through them. Okay. Yay! Isn't Zim nice? I mean, some of this stuff is tricky. But we've seen this for a long time. Remember, we've been making interactive media in Director and then in Flash and now in the HTML5 Canvas. Um, so we've been doing this a long time. That's why we know we need all this stuff. <laughs> all right. I am Dr. Abstract. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. And if you need any help with things, please come visit us, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to help out or in the Adobe community forums. All right. Have a great day or night. Cheers. 
And what have we got looking forward? We've got some physics to do. I'm not sure what we'll do next. Uh, maybe we can move to some physics and see what that's like. Okay, cheers.